Hello, and welcome to another action-packed edition of All or None, according to Jack, with your host, Jack Toledano. And I have a very special guest today. His name is Steve Buckley. He's from uh, uh, somewhere in Pennsylvania. I, I said in the, uh, you said in the suburbs of Philadelphia? Western suburbs of Philly. Okay, so welcome, Steve. And uh, tonight Thank we you. are going to talk about this very wonderful uh, uh, movie that uh, Steve put together called The Tull Phenomenon. As you can see from both our backgrounds, we're going to talk about Jethro Tull tonight. So, uh, uh, Steve, we'll go. We'll get right into it. Uh, how did you first get into Jethro Tull? How and well, when? I'd like to say thanks, Jack. Thanks for having me. Sure. Pleasure to see you. Um, Pleasure to make your acquaintance also. Well, you know, um, for most of us that got into Jethro Tull, it probably you know in that very impressionable you know, years that we, that we move through. Um, if you cast your mind back all the way to 74, 1974, and um, just picture a 12 year old walking into a very small record store in Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania. And I was greeted, um, again, not, not very, this record store is not, not much larger than about six to eight bedrooms. I mean, we're, we're not, we're not talking Sam Goody or We Three or in any of that massive right. scale. Certainly not Tower Records. My right. God. So I walk in. I'm greeted by the a 3D cardboard huge display of the War Child album. Nice. And you know my my first uh, which which of course is Ian in the purple cloak, which he also wore at the very beginning of the War Child uh, the War Child tour concert, the very opening part of the gig as he came out of the smoke he was wearing the exact same outfit and uh i think the background of that cover is uh melbourne uh, australia um right but the first thing that comes to the 12 year old's mind is i guess that's jethro tall <laughs> because because everybody um you know that's a novice makes that mistake and um at that time, I'm very much into the hit parader. It's all about the top, you know, the top 40 and going to a record store and picking up, you know, the list for the next week and see what the number one is, right. et cetera, et cetera. So um, I bought a Bungo in the Jungle 45 and that's where it started. So I know the exact day that it started. You know, it was slow growth from there because I was very much an Elton John fan at the time. Oh, OK. Um, it moved from Elton John to Chicago to Led Zeppelin, um, and then to Tull. Um, so that was definitely the seed planted that day sometime in 1974. Okay, that's awesome. I, uh, I didn't get into Tull until about uh, mid-78. Okay. And it was, uh, you know, word of mouth and uh, rock radio that kind of got me into it. And one of the songs, first songs I heard was Aqualung and Bungle in the Jungle. Mm hmm Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah I, I think my actual first album was probably M.U. Um, the, the Best of Jeff Rotol, I guess, part one. That, that's, that was mine as well, yep. Mm -hmm. I, I put that needle down. I heard Teacher for the first time, and I was hooked. Oh, yeah. And it was, there were certain um, remixes on that album that were a little different. You right. know, I. I Love the mix of teacher on that. It's way different than the benefit mix. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, like I said, it was slow progression. I, I, I was probably hardcore by about 77. Okay. So, so it took a while. Um, you know, my friend's group was very much, you know, the def default band was Led Zeppelin, period. Um, right. You know, some, some people went off on their little individual trails i did that with toll another guy was you know the stones fan the other guy was the pure zeppelin fan nothing else but zeppelin all the time you know but you know for my my individual path was uh was was tall uh -huh. and i never from 77 I, I i never i never changed it i never looked back well that's cool. it, it just it just expanded from there well, imagine a guy like me who's who's a big Kiss fan 
going from Kiss to Jethro Tull. I remember the Kiss Army. I, re yeah. I remember, you know, the singles and the albums and me being a drummer. I know that, you know, um, I used to drum to Kiss. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, did, uh, I did want something different and a little more sophisticated and a little mm -hmm. more musical. And there they were, Jethro Tull. So uh, well, we could talk about uh, the, so Steve put together, and I hope people have seen it, by now I know Steve has put uh, multiple vignettes up on YouTube about a movie an hour and 40 minute movie concert movie that Steve put together called the Tull Phenomenon mm -hmm. and, uh, Steve was very gracious to send me an advanced copy so I could check it out and it was absolutely wonderful so uh, to start off how long from start to finish would you say the whole project took it was it was definitely a two year process. Two year, you said. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it really started out as I mean, twenty years ago, I did a video for my own. I you know I did a lot of videos for my just for my own you know um, keepsakes, and I put a bunch of toll videos together that weren't in the same place. So I I might have taken my Sunday feeling from Isle of Wight and uh the whistler and which is promise and you know et cetera, et cetera. and one of the things i had had a um a soundtrack of thick as a brick and i had broken up thick as a brick into a couple of different visuals from different years and that's really where the concept of the movie told phenomenon started because i thought you know that could work that could work for something much much longer range, but um, there's just not enough material to, to even consider uh, pulling something. So, I mean, the idea, idea sat for 18, 20 years. Oh, wow. Hmm. Um, and then all of a sudden with the birth of YouTube and with, uh, uh, well, shout out here to Aaron Toll Tapes Ward, who has done an awful lot of extensive work with taking eight millimeter footage and finding a comparable audience recording and matching up the vocals nice. um, and making this stuff available. Other, uh, uh, there's, um, there's someone on YouTube, I, I don't think they're available by name. It's called the Jethro Tull Collection. And they have an awful lot of material. So, mm -hmm. I mean, as all this stuff is coming out, Tull is releasing more things. There, there's um around a live around the world dvds and and with with toll's dvd booklet releases you know an entire songs from the wood from landover maryland so all of a sudden um msg 1978 was finally an, an official release so i mean all this material over the last 15 to 20 years is making its way to um to our eyes and our ears. So I, I, I guess I, with that, combining all these videos, basically in my head, um, seeing flashes of, of this great shot and that great shot, I said, what if we combined or we filled a video with as much eye candy as possible? Um, a lot of times when you watch a videos, you know, there's dead zones, um, I, know, I know there's a spot in the MSG satellite broadcast where it just kind of goes to a monitor. <laughs> um, what, what if you can fill it with as much thrilling action as possible? Right. Uh, and, and anyway, that, that was my, you know, for the video part of it. Okay. Um, but it really started with the audio. Um, on Facebook, a few different Facebook groups, specifically Jethro Tull groups on Facebook, I will share um, my Dropbox um, folder. And that has actual remixes that I've done. Nice. And all I was doing was really, I had only done studio stuff. So I wanted to do something live and I chose Madison Square Garden 78. So it was in 5.1 audio, which is excellent for doing remixes because you have certain sound separation where um, you can bring you can bring certain nuances out that aren't there like 
M MSG had um, Martin Barr just buried it. Um, so I wanted to make a full concert of that to represent the Bursting Out tour. Um, the only problem with MSG, the satellite, that night of the satellite, they did it in a one-time only order. Um, so some tracks were shortened. Um, the order was different. So what I did is um, there's this website, uh, Ministry of Information, and it has almost every Jeff Rowe told tour on there. And it has the set list and the set list changes. So that's where the whole concept began as in 2019 as audio mm -hmm. and a remix with me using uh, the 5.1 mix mm -hmm. um, to um, set the levels to what I thought would be a perfect radio broadcast. Okay. Um, so, so I redid the, um, excuse me a second. Sure. A little parched. Uh, I do that all the time. So I'll give you an example, a song like My God. That one night, it segged with Cross-Eyed Mary. I didn't want that. I wanted the traditional My God into the flute solo. Right. So I had to uh, totally reconstruct that into something that sounded exactly as it should have sounded. Right. Um, you know, into the flute solo. And then I, I don't think I did it for this audio, but I did it for the movie where the flute solo was shortened. Of course, it was a, it was a 60 minute broadcast, but the band came out, did three songs. Originally, Ian said, we'll be right back and you'll be live around the world. And then they do 60 minutes and then Jeff Rotol then finishes the concert without being seen by by the entire world right at that they shut the video off okay so anyway we have my god and um then the flute solo the problem with the flute solo was it's missing beret how can you not have the flute solo without beret correct so for, so for the movie i had to make sure that 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 got um dubbed in overdubbed in okay so um so yeah, in 2019, you know, several listens on my stereo, several listens in the car, back and forth from wherever. Very I just nice. perfected, I perfected that up until the point where um, it sounded as good as it was going to sound. So that was done. And then we had COVID. Right. And I'm going to tell you, the only thing good about COVID is it gave me a starting point to really get deep with the movie because okay. because of the lockdowns and the time that I had mm -hmm. I got an excellent start on it and once I got that excellent start I was going to finish it whatever it took and it took uh 20 and uh a large part of 21 to really um you know a hundred and some versions of it um to perfect it and um voila you know uh okay. october october of 2021 okay. um, I, yes. I, re I released I it to the i'm sorry uh i i did i cut you off um i don't think so okay. uh, uh, i do remember that uh, you you gave me an advanced uh, notice that it was yes. coming out in yeah. october and true to word you gave it to me in October mm -hmm. and it was great. Yep. But, uh, while you were talking, I just thought of a, a, a question off the cuff. Uh, so I do do that sometimes. I oh, do it's... questions. What's that? Oh, it's fine. Any, ask me anything you want. So uh, you, you seem like you're, you're very well in tune with, uh, you know, audio production and video production. Do you have a, a background in that at all? No, it's all, it, it's all just, I, I, it began with my 1995 with my Gateway 2000. Oh, okay. Um, I had always had interest in, in, in video and audio, right. but, you know, it, it all started with that computer. And then um, a program called Cool Edit. Cool Edit. Which now is actually was bought out and it's now part of the, of, of the Adobe umbrella. Okay. Um, but you know that's 
that's where it started perfecting audio, being able to, you know, add ambience and um, just echo, just a whole bunch of different effects. I mean, you can sit there and create an ending for song uh, for a song where there's no ending, where it would fade out on the record. You right. can you, you just a lot of experimentation. And, you know, um, you know, my my one daughter played a lot of uh, sports growing up, so there was dad with the video camera and then um you know uh once i guess youtube got mature dad would download to uh youtube send out links so that um other parents could see the game that kind of thing so that's how the two worlds really collided the video and audio okay but I mean, you know, the, the things you can do nowadays, it, it's just amazing. No, I don't have a degree. I don't have a background, but I've, I've, I've always had a stirring interest in it. I may have a question or two for you. I have some video projects I have to put together uh, aside from my channel, but, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we can talk about that offline at a, another time. But uh, so, and you gave me this information, but for the benefit of our audience, uh, the concerts that the uh, the audio and the songs came from, could you uh, list that out for everybody? Well, let's see. Um, like I said, um, well, I mentioned his name before, Aaron Toll Tapes Ward. He did um, donate some footage um, to the cause, as did Larry Babin. Um, I mean, the my God, the amount of, amount of concerts that, um, or, or the years that uh, you have. Uh, well, one very obvious one, I, I guess, starting 1970, Isle White. Um, right. 1971, I mean, I don't know of any. I know I, audience recordings of the Aqualung tour, but I, I don't think I've seen any actual footage from the actual Aqualung tour. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be quite a find. That would be amazing. One but, person years ago that I used to work with was telling me that he went and saw them uh, at a place called the Westbury Music Fair, which is near me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually came out with an actual Aqualung suit, you know, the diving suit. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like if, uh, if, you know, if you, the stock footage from the thick as a brick and thick as a brick two tour, you see somebody walking by with a, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, the Aqualung suit that that could very well be him in, in the diver gear. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's 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 been a I guess a prop that they've used like you know for, right forever. Um, not sure if that one you know it, it might have I you know I was too young. We were both too young to experience. Right. Yeah, you know, all that early it would have been great. But uh, moving on to seventy two, I mean there is eight millimeter footage from Cincinnati in, in very close to front row. Uh -huh. It's a brick tour. Thank God for that. You know, any of these, these I'm going to mention the toll movie, the toll phenomenon would not be as good without this footage. Um, 73 passion play tour. It's really comes down to the, the third hurrah. Um, I, I guess promo video, I would call it. Right. Where they, we played the song the third hurrah but the scenes you're seeing is broken up parts of the uh passion play tour again another rare find mm -hmm. this was done in 16 millimeter and uh it was done by uh you know the, the toll road crew so no. you know just just having that where you know you you would have had next to nothing i mean there there's also eight millimeter footage of passion play as well um you know, moving on to 74, 75, you know, um, an, a, another lost uh, gem, Paris 75. Um, that was really supposed to be Toll's answer to Led Zeppelin's Song Remains a Saint. Oh, wow. Because, um, you know, Ian being as picky as he is, I mean, you know, he, you know, he probably didn't like some of the visual, the, the darkness. And actually, neither did Led Zeppelin. Because Led Zeppelin filmed, you know, at a similar place, MSG. Um, they also constructed, I'm talking about Led Zeppelin, constructed a soundstage across the pond. And like a year later, they were doing close-up shots that looked like it was from Madison Square Garden, but it wasn't. 
Right. Wow. So the, so the actual movie for Led Zeppelin was, you know, in two parts, but it was, it was all spliced in and you really couldn't tell. And, and some of the, some of the great visuals they, they did once the concert was over and across the pond, you know, a year later uh, were awesome. I mean, John Paul Jones even had to wear a wig because wow. he had cut his hair. Um, oh. But in Toll's case with Power 75, um, they, I'm not sure if it was one night or two, but you know, they, they had filmed uh, their set list and they also did some stuff in the afternoon, I believe on an off day. So it was kind of the same thing. You know, you don't like maybe all that you got real time spontaneously, but this time you can, you can sit there and stop the camera and direct, um, do a little more directing right. um, and maybe get some, some better quality footage. Well, that was the idea, you know, to, it was supposed to be out on, I think, um, Japanese video disc. I, I think that was the original plan. Right. Um, but, you know, the whole Paris 75, the whole thing gets, gets shelved, you know, it's, it, and, and then it gets lost. Um, the only thing that really survives from it is the Minstrel and the Galley promo, which you see parts of that in the movie. But mm -hmm. there's also some extra footage that I was able to put into the movie. I think there's a verse of Aqualung in there, you know, him wearing, again, the, the, the classic Minstrel and the Gallery codpiece outfit. Right. Um, but anything from that is just rare to come by. Um, then you move on to 76 and the Tampa con um, concert, you know, quite a find. Um, you know, dressed in the um, motocross, the blue motocross outfit. Right. Uh, 77, there's a couple of good, great footage from Songs from the Wood Tour. 78, of course, we have MSG. Um, 79 in Germany. Um, you know, we've got, um, you know, makings of the Stormwatch Tour. Um, 80 LA from the uh, Slipstream. Um, video um the a tour live 1980 82 there's, there's more german footage and i believe uh, 84 under wraps that's that's from jersey right um you know then it moves into like um 88 we have the the, the 20th anniversary tour i don't believe there's anything from um 87 or 89 in the movie again a lot of oh no i'm wrong um there is in thick as a brick there are a couple snippets of ian and dave peg from 87 um but nothing from 89 um i believe there's some stuff from like turkey in 91 um catfish rising um there's some footage from little little light music um european tour interesting and then stuff that larry babin donated that um you might find this interesting that um who is larry babin uh, larry babin used to um have a lot of good um can i say the word bootleg recordings from various places oh okay you know he's he's become a friend of mine over the years um I probably known Larry since like 1990-ish. Um, just met up with him at uh, the most recent uh, Martin Bar show uh, in Sellersville, Pennsylvania. Very but nice. uh, he um, donated some. Again, uh, it wasn't called a Little Light Music Tour. I think for the American release, it was the um, Light and Dark Tour. Mm -hmm. This was from a place you might have heard of, the uh, Beacon Theater. Yes. Beacon mm -hmm. Theater. So there's footage in there from there. Uh, um, we've, we've got Beacon Theater. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, for, further on, there's um, South America, uh, probably Roots the Branches tour. Um, mm -hmm. for, further on from there, um, 2001, we've got the um, Living with the Past. There's some, some footage from that in there. Uh, then the, the maybe 2005, 2006, there's, you know, that's when, when Ian starts adopting the, um, you know, it's that vest look. Um, 
Right. Sometimes it's more with a, a skull caps. Other times it's it's more with a do rag. Um, and then I, I went all the way up to 2011. Uh, there there is some footage I believe during my God that is the last um, Jethro Tull with Martin. Okay. So, so all the footage in there is from Jethro Tull concerts. There's nothing in there from any solo tours. Oh, very uh, nice. Not, so, not, not, uh, none just, of Martin's tour or Ian's tours. Okay. Um, I just got a little interruption telling me I have nine minutes left in this video. Otherwise, we're going to get cut off. And I have. Okay. Go ahead. So, what we'll do is we'll, we'll just speed it up a little bit. And uh, so, um, how many times have you seen Jethro Tull? Off the top of your I, head. I don't have the exact number, but I'm somewhere in the 60 range. 60 something okay i'm in the six or seven range but <laughs> no I've, I've i've been all over new york i've been rochester and poughkeepsie and and binghamton and wow. you know i have certainly did my share I, mm -hmm. I i i flew a couple times one time i flew out to detroit michigan that's where i was able to see roots to branches tour wow very nice i was actually in poughkeepsie today <laughs> walking across that uh that new bridge, that walkway over the Hudson Bridge, and, you know, okay. coming from upstate and I passed by and I figured I'd stop and check it out. It was really nice. It was a beautiful nice. day. It's a nice town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so any other bands that you're thinking of giving the Steve Buckley treatment to? I don't. I, with two years worth of work, it was so intense at some times. Um, uh -huh. Just, just the research, just, just you know, to watch all this stuff over and over. Um, and I'm, I'm not talking about um, the final product, but to, to, to just the research to say, okay, that close up is awesome. That's going in the movie, and and to, you know, watch multiple. Let's say just multiple thick as a bricks. Just take the one song. You know, I'm watching the thick as a brick from MSG in 77 and 76 and, you know, where whatever else sources and uh, just piecing that together like a jigsaw puzzle. Right. Uh, you know, I would say, pro you know, I'll never say never, but based on just my knowledge of Tull through the years, I, I think you have to know at least something about the band to be able to put something like that together. Like I, I, I would be. You know, I, I don't know if, if there's another band out there that, well, maybe, maybe Genesis, <laughs> maybe. Okay. Because um, because I basically go Tull, Genesis, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd. And if you force me to say five, mm -hmm. I'll say Rush. There you go. Nice. Um, but after that, it's kind of, I'm just going to leave it as, you know, we don't have to number them. They're there. They know they're there. <laughs> Just leave it at that. <laughs> right. So uh, let me let me see. Uh, okay, we got about six minutes. Uh, the the video. Did you do any enhancements in any way? Oh yeah, yeah. I I for for some reason the um, I guess the perfectionist in me. I I wanted to de deal with any. I wanted to minimize all the video noise. Or oh, okay. So a lot of times you, you listen to even some of the stuff that's professionally released, you know, you see snow in the background or just, you know, so I did my best to darken the background in a similar way so that even though I'm blending all kinds of different footage, um, again, one of my, one of my must, it had to be in 16, nine um, resolution. I wasn't going to release something in the modern day that was in the um, in the square four three. Um, right. You know, I, I I and I had to painstakingly stretch that to make sure that we don't have a fat Ian. Mm, right. Uh, but uh, I guess to make um, the simplest statement as possible, you know, um, it was all about darkening the background. Uh, reducing the video noise and making the images pop out a little more. So yes, that was done. Okay, that's uh, that's awesome. So uh, I want to say thank you so much to Stephen for uh, giving us some of his time. Uh, this great discussion about the uh, the Tull phenomenon. If you have absolutely, if you haven't seen it. 
by all means, check it out. I will have the, uh, the, the video link uh, down in the comments section so you can watch it just like uh, when I reviewed it, uh, what, maybe a month or so ago, I had it there as well. Uh, did you get some extra hits from that? Did that help oh, you? Yeah, out? yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, there's, there's, um, because I can believe it or not, I mean, there are single versions of this movie, uh, single songs, like one, like Skating Way is one of them that's, that's on YouTube. Right. But I don't want to get into the, you know, the algorithm or anything, but the entire movie is not on YouTube. Right. Uh, so I miss that huge scope. So there's there's ways of kind of advertising it off of the single songs right. um, that, that are available. Um, but it's a it's a Vimeo link. And I would say to this day right now, um, about 4000 views and maybe about 2000 downloads. And there's probably more than 6000 toll fans in New York alone. <laughs> wow. Great. So, you know, um, there, there's an awful lot of um, people out there that you know don't know what they're missing. Right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll get them uh, watching just in in time. Don't worry about that. So uh, sounds good. All right. So I'd like to. I, I appreciate the time and the opportunity, Jack. Oh, sure. My pleasure, Steve. Uh, so I just want to thank you for for putting that awesome work together. That great movie. Uh, I was upstate at my in-laws. I had nothing to watch. And, you know, you, you sent it to me at just the right time. I watched it that night. It was start to finish. No, no, no interruptions. It was great. So, uh, so uh, to, my, to uh, my subscribers and everybody watching, uh, if you like, you know, what you see, please put your comments in the comment section. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I'd love to have you on board. Uh, the subscriptions just keep on growing. I want to thank everybody for that. And uh, I'll say good night and I'll let Steve say good night. Good night, all. My pleasure. All right. Take care.